about a week into my master's climb and something y'all can probably relate to keeps happening. I'm doing well, my early games look good, my mid game decision making is wrong, shit even my KDAs aren't looking half bad. But I feel like I don't have any control over my games. Some of my teammates are playing like absolute dog shit. I feel like the worst teammate on either side decides who wins or loses and me playing well has literally no impact whatsoever. Now I know what most of y'all are thinking. If you thought this, if you genuinely thought this, then you're not a homo sapien, you're a fucking homo apian. In times like this, it becomes very easy to throw a tantrum and blame the system. Instead of doing that, listen to how I'm trying to get myself out of loser's queue. Number one, having the correct amount of respect for ranked. Notice that I said the correct amount of respect. You can fuck yourself over if you have too little or even too much respect. Too little respect and you start spamming games thinking you'll just run up the ladder. Discipline yourself and treat ranked like a different game mode from norms. I know they have the same map and all but they couldn't be more different in practice. Whatever you accomplish in norms has nothing, has no weight when you queue up into ranked. While norms, even at its highest level, is a bit more chill and laid back, ranked is a cutthroat dungeon and mistakes get punished real quick. This game is a MOBA, not an MMORPG. The people you're playing against aren't hard difficulty mobs, they're actual functioning human beings. At least some of them anyway. If you don't acknowledge that and resort to blaming your teammates, you'll fail 100% of the time. This isn't solo leveling and you're not Sun Jin Woo. You don't have nearly as much plot armor as this fucker. Too much respect and this is where the infamous ranked anxiety kicks in. You start sweating and shaking at the prospect of playing ranked, losing LP and people judging you for it. The tragic thing about this problem is that it's actually harder to solve. I mean with too little respect you can always tone down the mindless spamming and the main character syndrome. But don't worry I got you covered. I already made a video on ranked anxiety because it was probably the biggest cut block to LP in my entire life. The perpetual aversion to queuing up and constantly being scared is something I can personally relate to since I lost years, years worth of LP due to simply not queuing up in the first place. If Ranked anxiety is something you struggle with. I suggest you fuck off this video, click the title card on the top right, and watch my ranked anxiety video instead. It'll be a game changer for you, I promise. Now, back to the topic. Why is the correct amount of respect important? Approaching the game from this standpoint allows you to assimilate quicker into your ranks. What I mean by that is, you get used to playing at a certain rank. If you followed my intensity protocol, you're probably already learning at a much faster rate compared to the average League of Legends player. Every ELO bracket is slightly different from each other, and we can all have different perceptions of a certain ELO bracket for a wide variety of reasons. Dedicating a a few weeks or even a few days to familiarize yourself with playing ranked at your current level and figuring out the metagame within your level is quite a useful trick going forward. And when I say figure out the metagame, I meant adapting your champion to that elo bracket, not changing champions altogether. You're not allowed to do that, I'll fucking slap you. It's something I've been forcing myself to do in these low diamond lobbies. Low diamond is notorious for enters and trolls because people have already done the hard part in getting there. Now they're just gonna chill and first time champion for funsies. This is why every game is such a stomp because there's usually one fuckface making the game lopsided in either direction. This is something I had to accept about my games. Instead of lashing out and blaming dumb shit like my teammates or matchmaking or the meta, I've simply chosen to take steps and work around this problem so I can keep progressing towards the goal I want. Because at the end of the day guys, it really boils down to how bad you want it. You might think that you want that rank really bad, but if you have time to blame Riot's matchmaking, you definitely don't want it bad enough. Let me put it to you like this. If you were crossing a sidewalk and a car was speeding towards you, would you just stand there like a dumb fuck blaming the driver for over speeding? Or would you try to move out the damn way as quick as possible? Climbing in league or in life is all about focusing on the things you can change. Now that we know how we're gonna go about beating Loser's Cube, let's talk about what we're gonna do. Number two, increase carry potency. Now, this might be a bit hard for some players to internalize, so I'm gonna give you a three step process for creating more carry potency in your games in the long term. Number one, Champion Mastery. Every single time I hit a new ranked peak, I did it by maining a single champion. When I first broke into gold, it was through Bane Top. When I first broke into Platinum slash Emerald, it was through Diana and Amumu Jungle. When I first broke into Diamond, it was through Trindamir Mid. I always talk about how important Champion Mastery is during your climb, but I'm gonna come at it from a different angle this time. When you have good Champion Mastery, there's an internal checklist inside your head. It's a list of conditions that needs to be met for your champion so it can win the game. Just like every champion, the list of its win conditions can differ quite drastically from champion to champion. It's a very beautiful thing and it's the easiest trick to climbing consistently within this game. I've been implementing this by going back to the same champions I got diamond with. I'll only play them regardless of comps and whatnot and I'll force myself to adapt the champion to fit the game's needs instead of changing my champion altogether. This understanding of my checklist can carry games that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to. However, even if you have the checklist in front of you, it's kind of useless if you don't combine it with number two on this list. Number two, intensity. I'm gonna keep teaching this lesson until my viewers can say it in their fucking sleep. So I'm thinking of the best way to explain this and here's what I came up with. 
If champion mastery is the checklist in front of you, then intensity is the eyesight. How good your eyes are when you read that checklist. If all you do is pan games with a checklist stapled to your fucking forehead, you're really not gonna get anywhere. By limiting the number of games and focusing on high intensity, high map awareness, you can output at a much higher level, making it easier to check off the list and win the game from there. I've been implementing this by using my trusty old one game a day strategy. One game every day, max focus. By leaving time in my schedule for review and introspection, as well as healthy habits like working out and sleeping more, I can guarantee to myself that I'll be in mint condition when my teammates are feeding and I'll have to carry them. The third and final tip for boosting your carry potency is actually education. Education is crucial to climbing in ranked because there's only so much you can do with your own intuition and feel. At some point guys, you're gonna need outside perspective. The reason you even clicked on this video was to receive an education on how to stop relying on your teammates and how to finally get out of loser's queue. And hopefully you've received some good insights. YouTube is quite saturated with the league climbing tips especially on the big channels where they prey on the newer players a lot of famous streamers are also talented with a good gaming background which means they are naturally predisposed to climbing the ladder there's a ton of advice out there and while all of it seems good i don't blame you for not knowing when to apply what piece of advice it's like trying to complete a puzzle when you only have 70 percent of the pieces no matter how hard you try you'll never finish it simply because you lack the necessary information don't worry i got you covered there as well as someone who started his rank journey in bronze 2 i've made sure to make my partnership program the cheapest one out there. I myself needed to work with high elo players to get where I am now. It, and that's made me appreciate having a mentor. It isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign of intelligence. Links are in the description for anyone who's interested. Otherwise, good luck on your climb and remember, anyone can get diamond.